This program is sponsored by the partners and friends of Redeemer's Voice Media. Isaiah 43 verse 18 The Bible says Do not remember the former things Nor consider the things of old Behold I will do a new thing Now it shall spring forth Shall you not know it I'll even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me. The jackals and the ostrich. Because I give waters in the wilderness. And rivers in the desert. To give drink to my people, my chosen. These people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. But you have not called upon me, O Jacob. And you have been weary of me, O Israel. You have not brought to me the sheep for your burnt offerings. Nor have you honored me with your sacrifice. I have not caused you to serve with grain offerings, nor wearied you with incense. You have bought me no sweet cane with money, nor have you satisfied me with the fat of your sacrifices, but you have burdened me with your sins. You have wearied me with your iniquities. Verse 25 says, I even I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance therefore and let us contend together. State your case. That you may be acquitted. Your first father's sin. And your mediators have transgressed against me. Therefore I will profane the princesses of the sanctuary. I will give Jacob to the curse. And Israel to reproaches. Lord God Almighty we thank you once again this morning. For gathering us this morning here. As we sit at your feet we desire to hear what you have to say to us Lord we open our spirits to our, the word of the Lord teach us admonish us, rebuke us direct us, correct us in whichever way the Holy Spirit will lead we submit to your leading we exalt you Holy Father for all that you are doing today and we take charge over the atmosphere this morning Declaring that the glory of God is shining in this land. And therefore principalities and powers and spiritual wickednesses of evil. They have no right over this land in the name of Jesus. And Lord we thank you because the accuser is already banished. And therefore Father God we have every confidence to stand before you this morning. To hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say. And the Lord God, you are ministering your word and healing to every soul under the sound of my voice. Father, thank you for those who have joined us online. May your grace abound also to them. And the Lord God, you will supply to them according to your will and your purposes. We exalt you, mighty King, in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody shouted, Amen. 
Well, this morning I want to talk on the impact of prayer because one of the things that is happening in the world today is that the enemy is fighting to make sure that the believers have gone to slumber and that they are not able to effectively stand before God and to seek his face. And I believe this is the hour that the Lord wants to teach us. This week we are beginning from tomorrow we are beginning our season of prayer and fasting and uh, it is good for us to go through the season of prayer and learning what the Holy Spirit desires of each one of us because sometimes we take the things of God for granted because we think we know when we actually do know and so it's good for you to be available as leaders. Be available in the season of prayer, in the morning glories, lunch hours, and evenings. And of course, we'll be having a 24-hour prayer season where we are going to have prayer watches. But as we do so, it is good for us to look at what is the mind of God concerning prayer and what is the impact of prayer on our lives. God's intent from the beginning was that we should stand in his presence. Our effectiveness on the face of the earth is not dependent on how educated you are. It is dependent on how close and proximity you have with God. And it is you, as we said last Sunday, it is up to you to know that the greatest habitation for man is in the presence of God. And if there is anything the devil is doing, he is intending to make sure that we do not stay in that presence. If we abide in the presence of God, that's where our joy is. That's where our victory is. That's where our supplies is. That's where our resources are. There is nothing we can do without God. He is our life. He is our light. He is our source. He has all that it takes for us. To live effectively on the face of the earth. And because of the nature, the Adamic nature and the fall of man. The way back and the highway back to his presence is through prayer. It is through prayer that you can now go back into the place of his presence. He says, and you shall come and seek my face and you shall find me. So God's desire, number one, is for you to spend your life in the place of prayer. Because that is the secret place of the Most High. You as a believer, your protection, your security, your joy, Everything you desire in this life is found when you, all, you, you abide in the place of prayer. And the devil is fighting daily to make sure that you lose the confidence of approaching the throne of God boldly. God's desire is for you to approach his throne boldly so that you may receive all that you desire in time of need. So it is his will that we seek his face. It is his desire that we seek his face. And one of the things that makes us not to pray is because the devil puts negative minds or negative remembrances in your mind to kill your confidence. To destroy your impact. You know, if you are fighting with an enemy, 
and he strips you naked, you cannot continue fighting. You will be defending yourself because you have lost the confidence to stand and fight because you are not properly armed. And the best armor, first of all, is what you have clothed yourself with. And the devil's plan is to disarm you and to, uh, to unclothe you. So that you don't feel the confidence to stand before God. Remember what happened to Adam in the garden of Eden. When he realized that sin had come and that the glory had departed. And he felt naked, he could not stand before God. So he had to hide. So the devil wants you to feel unclothed. That's why our salvation restores uh, back to us the clothing, the confidence. That's why we are saved by grace and not by works. And after being saved by grace, because there are things that we could not do by our own power and capacity, then God... Through Jesus, he clothes us back with righteousness. So we receive the garment of righteousness. It is that garment of righteousness that gives you the confidence to come before the throne of God. So that you have that, you feel clothed, you are clothed with himself. So he says this, remember not the former things. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Yes, there are things you did in the past. There are things, there is a lifestyle you lived in the past. There are sins you committed, but the devil will go fishing out all those things that you did or what happened, whether they were good or bad. The intent of Satan is to fish. He is a fisherman to go and fish from the sea that God has thrown all the wickednesses and has forgotten it. But the devil wants to fish it back. So that he puts before you, when you want to stand before God, he'll tell you, remember, remember you used to be this, or remember yesterday, this is what you did. Remember all these things. So the accuser of the brethren, his job is to make sure that he stands before God to, uh, to lay claim or a com a complain against you so that you don't receive what God the Father has in store for you. But God's plan is for you to move forward. He says... Behold, I will do a new thing. May he begin a new work in your life. Somebody shout amen. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. He says, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. Why is he saying that I want to make a road? It's because there are barriers the enemy places before his, the people of God. And that's why Jesus is our way. He is the way, the truth, and our life. No one goes back to the Father except through Jesus Christ. So Jesus is our highway back to God. Somebody shout amen. So our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ is the key to align you with the will and the purposes of our Heavenly Father. Say my amen. He says, I am the way. Behold, I will make a road in the wilderness. I will make a road in the wilderness. 
you will not get lost on this highway. He will make a way for you where there is no way. In the wilderness where there has never been a paved highway, there are thousands of Chris crossing uh, pathways or roads and you may not know where it leads to. But God is saying the reason why we feel lost is because we lose direction when we begin to think of our past. God has so much set ahead for you. He has your destiny well mapped out. He has your name. Remember what he told Jeremiah chapter 1. He said, I knew you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. I knew you. So God knows you. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Same with you. You are predestined for great things. He says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born, I sanctified you. And I ordained you a prophet to the nations. I knew you. Lift your hand and say, Lord, thank you for you know me. That's why somebody sang a song and they said, he knows my name. He knows you. He knows you are waking up. He knows you are rising. He knows you are when you go to sleep. He knows when you are worried. He knows everything about your life. And because he knows you, he has your days and your destiny well mapped out, sorted. He knows which direction you should take in this life. He knows what is waiting for you tomorrow. The Bible says he knows the end from the beginning. There's nothing that is away from his mind. He knows you. But I want you to know the enemy will bring confusion in your pathway. So you look like you are in a wilderness. You don't know where you are supposed to be going. You don't know what you are supposed to be achieving. You don't know who you are supposed to be. You live a life without knowing what is the impact that God intends for you in this life? And so many people's lives are delayed by reason of them not having a clear purpose in life because they have not aligned with the Mecca, the, the only one that has the manual for your destiny. Shout Amen. David said something in the, I think it's, Psalms 139 verse 16 he says that everything that is about me is already written in the books he knows he says your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed and in your book they all were written look the days fashioned for me the days fashioned for you, sister. The days fashioned for me. That's the destiny that God has already set for you. When as yet there were none of them. When they were not existing. The Bible says, your eyes saw my substance. Being yet unformed. You saw me. You understood me. So in other words, you are not just a product of your father and mother's relationship. You are a product of God. They were only the vehicles through which you had to come. But your substance is already formed was written in the books before when before you were unformed somebody shout amen 
verse 17. He says, How precious also are your thoughts to me. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. How great is the sum of them. You see, these are the things the enemy would want to blind you from. When he blinds your eyes and he puts upon you the spirit of self condemnation and he brings pressure on your life you don't see the goodness of God you don't understand you think you are living your own life your source your livelihood is not in your capacity it is in God if he go back to verse 16 is if he formed you and wrote these things in the book the question is this, do you know what is there? Do you know what is in the book concerning you, sister? He says, your eyes saw my substance. Being yet unformed. And in your book, they were all written. The days fashioned for me. When as yet there were none of them. So when God says your destiny is well secured. He knows. Now the reason why we are struggling in life. There are many things you should have achieved. 40 years ago. 30 years ago. 20 years ago. 15 years ago. There are things you should have achieved last year. But the devil puts them on hold by reason of ignorance. That's why the Bible says in Hosea, my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people perish for lack of knowledge. It is when we are ignorant of what the Lord has intended for us that the devil can play games with our lives. Are you listening to me? The devil can play games with your life by reason of ignorance. God does not call you into the place of prayer because he wants to trouble you. He is calling you to educate you. He calls you into the place of prayer to show you what he has written about you in the book. This is who you are supposed to be, my daughter. This is who you are supposed to be, my son. And I want you to know all these things have been done by grace not because you made inquiry of them. This is why you need to know this. Everything that is supposed to be done for you from the day you are conceived in your mother's womb to the day you will exit in this world God has already prepared them and he has made them available for every human being on the face of the earth. And Jesus paid the price to make them available. So what you need is already been made available. But how to access them depends on how you approach the throne of grace. You need to approach boldly so that you may receive that which already is prepared for you. It's already made. Are you still with me this morning? He's already mad. Why does God want you to pray? He wants you to pray so that he may show you this is what you're supposed to be. Your struggle is not for nothing. You need to know that if you break this barrier, because the devil will put bulwarks 
or roadblocks and barriers, the devil will go and ask for his training orders just because of the sins that you committed or the sins of your forefathers or because of some of the mistakes that you have done. And the devil will use that because he is the adversary. Being the adversary, the Bible says we need to be sober and to be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is looking for somebody whom he may devour. Hello. So you have to resist him steadfastly in faith. You must learn how to resist him. Be sober. Be steadfast. Be vigilant. You have to fight the good fight of faith. Now, how do you why, why do you do all these things? Is because there, there are things set for you, but you have to fight to receive them. Shout amen. Be sober. Be vigilant because you are adversary. The devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking. Doing what? Say it louder. Seeking. Now he knows that he doesn't have much time. And so he doesn't sleep the way we sleep. Okay? He is working overtime. He doesn't want to waste time. So he's looking for anything to accuse you for. He's looking for anything that can give him you know, he cannot do anything against you until he has gotten a ruling from the throne of God. Satan can do nothing to you until he has received an order to execute against your life. Because you are protected. I say you are protected. I say again, you are protected. And that's why the Bible says you have to be sober. You have to be vigilant. Verse number 9 says that you need to resist him. Shout amen. Resist him steadfastly in the faith. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. This is the, the normal. The devil is roaming about. Has an agenda to make sure that your, your life is frustrated. That's why your only place of refuge is prayer. Is somebody listening to me? Your only place of refuge is in the place of prayer. So that you do not allow your mind to wander into your past and always living a life of guilt and condemnation. Bible says there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. As east is as far as the west, so God has already thrown away the sins. And he says, verse number 22 of Isaiah 43, But you have not called upon me. This is the irony. He, he says, all these things are made available for you. But why are you not coming? Why have you not come? So that you may receive that which God has already prepared for you. He says, Verse 25, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. For my own sake. Our confidence in prayer 
is on the basis of knowing that our sins have been forgiven. I say again, our confidence in prayer is on the basis of us knowing that our sins have been forgiven. And that God is no longer looking at you or every time he sees you, he has a big rod and he wants to hit your head. And so you want to run away. He is welcoming you. That's why Jesus said, come unto me. All you that are heavily loved, come to me. Come unto me. James says, we have not because we ask not. When you do not ask, you can't have it. So God is saying, he says, put me in remembrance. Let us argue together. Let's contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. Somebody say, I need acquitted. I need to be acquitted. He says, state your case that you may be acquitted. You know, it's, it's, like, it's like somebody who goes to court. You've been taken to court and you've been accused of certain wrongdoings or something that your enemy or your adversary has placed before the judge. And so he is giving his own case. He has presented a case before the judge. It is up to you to state your own. Set up your own defense. And Bible says, come. Put me in remembrance. In other words, as much as you have been accused, there are things that are already in the book about you. Can you go back to the books and open and say, this is what I have done. This is who I am. This is a wrong accusation against me. This is what has happened to me. This is what my Lord Jesus Christ has done for me. And because he is your advocate, he is ever making intercessions for you. He knows that there is evidence. You stand before your father with evidence. Somebody shout amen. You stand before God with your evidence. That the blood of Jesus has already blotted out all these things. I am a child of God. Yes, I may have sinned, but I am forgiven. And so, it is written that I am no longer under this condemnation. So, I deserve to be acquitted. There is no accusation. There is no more accusation against me in this regard. And you'll be acquitted. That's what God is saying. But you need to report God in remembrance. How do you put God in remembrance? Is by you knowing what is it that is written concerning your life. So you have to be a person who knows the scriptures. You must spend time in the presence of God for the Holy Spirit to make or to put the conviction in your spirit. It is also when you spend time in the presence of God that you can hear clearly the voice of God. Now, when the enemy wants to keep you in prison or in bondage, he'll make sure that you live a life of guilt. He'll make sure that you lose your confidence and he'll make sure that you are not having the knowledge of what Christ has already done for you. And for that matter, you hide from him. You run away. This is why prayer is the most difficult exercise to many believers. Prayer is the most difficult, including even bishops and pastors. Is the most difficult exercise. Because the enemy wants you not to approach the throne of grace 
to receive what you need. It is my prayer that this week, as we are preparing for the anniversary, because one of the things that I believe that God wants to do, he wants to usher you into a new dimension, spiritual dimension as we step into this new dimension of our celebration. Somebody shout amen. Now, there are things that people have accused you of. And the devil holds them. But until you stand and you say, I was acquitted of this. I didn't do any wrong with this. The devil will continue holding it. There are things you said with your own mouth. And you bound yourself to them. Are you listening to me? Bible says in the book of Proverbs 6, I think verse 2. It says that you are ensnared by the words of your mouth. So there are things that you have said with your own mouth. And the devil uses them to ensnare you. To keep you in bondage. That's why God is saying, come, let's discuss this matter. Let's argue together. Let's talk about it. So that you may be acquitted. And because we have the advocate before the Father, the man Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, our helper, he will remind us of what we are supposed to be. That's why your closeness is very important to help you live a victorious life. And so as we begin this season of prayer and fasting, it is my prayer that you should not run away from what is the most important place of your life. The secret place. The place where God wants you to abide. The place of prayer. The place of prayer is where your life comes from. Your resources. Your victory. You don't argue about it. That's why you run when you see death approaching. You want to leave. Everybody wants to leave. And because you want to leave, your place of life is in prayer. The place where you now realize who you are is in prayer. So it is my prayer that the spirit of prayer be released back. Every one of us needs this baptism of the spirit of prayer. And this morning I want you to stand up on your feet. And I want you to just make a brief prayer. A commitment a dedication to the Lord. He wants to make a highway for you, a road for you in the wilderness. There are things that have become a confusion in your life. There are things that you are not able to achieve. There are projects that have stalled. There are plans that you had and now you don't even know whether they will ever happen. And you're wondering how will they happen. So, I just want you to tell the Lord, I take this moment to dedicate my life once again to the place of prayer. This is, is the cross, and he's the way I go. See
authority as the priest of this house to nullify every accusation to destroy every bondage and anything the enemy has stood before the court of God to accuse them of father I declare acquittal in the name of Jesus father as we place our petition before you we declare as you have said that we put you in remembrance and now we are reminding you Jehovah that by the stripes of Jesus this man is healed this woman is healed in the name of Jesus by what Christ did on the cross their sins have been forgiven their trespasses have been cleared and they have been acquitted from every accusation of the enemy this man that you forgave today we have confidence to walk with you in the mighty name of Jesus Lord I thank you for your healing virtue that is already flowing in the mighty name of Jesus lift your hands and just tell him thank you receive that which brought you in the house this morning we thank the partners and friends of Redeemer's Voice Media for making this program possible.